with speciality in the enterprise space as well as the consumer space. The inspiration was whilst I was in school, I got introduced to modern ways of doing business at the time. So after school, I decided not to work for anybody and to explore the opportunity. The challenges were and still are primarily acceptability. And the space that we serve is a space that is dominated by men and decision making is also within their hands. So giving you the chance to do that level of business with them as a, as a woman is been a big challenge. I always condition my mind to look beyond the challenge, but that never meant to me I was naive. So I kept my focus and um, got what had to be done done. I have been a happy Ecobank customer for the past 15 years. Trust was already established. There was no other that could have met our needs at the time. Ecobank has been just dependable. In 10 years, <laughs> being all over the continent and following Ecobank, My name is Jacqueline Dio Eko. I am the principal and the founder of the Dewey International School of Applied Sciences, which is kindergarten all the way to high school. I would say my first role model was my father, because my father was an educator, and when he was alive, he did a lot of things to change the educational system, not only in Cameroon, but in Africa. Others who are role models to me are, I would say, women especially who are doing their thing and succeeding. Women who have a lot of courage to go out and do what they really want to do and do it well. This school was actually created to train leaders of tomorrow. And the fact that it is a sole proprietorship, I have discovered that it's been a little bit challenging, especially financially. As a woman, it's usually hard to, to, to get loans if you do not have a land title and so on. But we were fortunate to have had a very good relationship with um, EcoBank. We've been with EcoBank now for more than 10 years. Each year, they gave us an opportunity to take a little bit of a bigger loan to help us do other things until the point where we were able to take a loan to, to, to build a school. So I'm really motivated with anything that will help somebody to grow. As far as where I see the school in 10 years, I believe we will still be leaders in education. And maybe why not higher education? Bon, non, bien, qu'on n'a pas de 
eni nami bo yin lo de su kan hun e mele no do mo do ye be run ko iton yin lo yo yin lo ni do kan hun mo ko to kaka ni are blo pe wo aso on to si le ma fo gbale gbo ata hun mo no ba run ko ti ni ko si to ni ta sa fi le yi ogun bo ti My name is Adeola Omikumi. We are into hospitality. We run restaurants between Abuja and Lagos airports, and then we do in-flight catering. What motivates this business with them as a, as a woman has been a big challenge. I always condition my mind to look beyond the challenge, but that never meant to me I was naive. So I kept my focus and um, got what had to be done done. I have been a happy Ecobank customer for the past 15 years. Trust was already established. There was no other that would have met our needs at the time. Ecobank has been just dependable. In 10 years, <laughs> being all over the continent and following Ecobank, Jacqueline Dio Eko. I am the principal and the founder of the Dewey International School of Applied Sciences, which is a kindergarten all the way to high school. I would say my first role model was my father because my father was an educator and when he was alive, he did a lot of things to change the educational system, not only in Cameroon, but in Africa. Others who are role models to me are, I would say, women especially who are doing their thing and succeeding. Women who have a lot of courage to go out and do what they really want to do and do it well. This school was actually created to train leaders of tomorrow. And the fact that it is a sole proprietorship, I have discovered that it's been a little bit challenging, especially financially. As a woman, it's usually hard to, to, to get loans if you do not have a land title and so on. But we were fortunate to have had a very good relationship with um, EcoBank. We've been with EcoBank now for more than 10 years. Each year, they gave us an opportunity to take a little bit of a bigger loan to help us do other things. To the point where we were able to take a loan to, to, to build a school. So I'm really motivated with 
anything that will help somebody to grow. As far as where I see the school in 10 years, I believe we will still be leaders in education. And maybe not higher education. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to one and all. In Africa, and hope potential to unlock economic growth and transform our communities. Now, in spite of the devastating impact COVID-19 has had on persons from all walks of life, we see that women across the continent are still pushing the envelope to meet the challenges of the day. Now, if as a collective, we are to contribute to the economic development and financial integration of the continent, we cannot afford to ignore women and the role that they play. considers the inspiring train of bold, fearless and ambitious women like Njeri Ryongi of Kenya, who is the co-founder of Wananchi Online, and entrepreneurs like Aisa Dion, a renowned Senegalese textile designer, who through sheer determination brought the work of her country's local artisans to an upscale international and indeed hold potential to unlock this great continent's economic growth. For this reason, today we will be unveiling an component of the solution to elevating the power of women in unlocking economic growth across the continent. Of I am Nana Araba Abba from the Ecobank Group, your host for this morning's event, to which I wish you all a very warm welcome. Now we have an engaging agenda to cover the next 80 to 90 minutes, which is now up on your screens. Today, we will have the pleasure to hear from an interactive academy, the Group Chief Executive Officer of Ecobank Transnational Incorporated, Madam Esther Dasanu of Afawa, Madam Deborah Otitalio of Royal Roots Communications, 
Madam Josephine Anakankuma of the Ecobank Group and Her Excellency Tasha Marshall. Now to ensure that you have an opportunity to share your thoughts with us and to pose your questions to our guests, we have a Q&A box available to you, which you can find on the right-hand side of your screen as we speak. Now, every effort will be made to field all your questions. So please, do keep your comments and questions coming. To set the stage for what promises to be an insightful program, we will now receive the work dress from a decision man. He's a seasoned banker, a true Pan-African advocate for the elevation of women in business, the group chief executive of Esco Bank Transnational Incorporated, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ade Ayeyemi. Thank you, Nana. Uh, Excellency, Mama, Grasha, Marcel, all our illustrious guests, successful female entrepreneurs, panelists, fellow eco bankers, ladies and gentlemen. My sincere appreciation and warm welcome to all, you all for joining this webinar, which is presenting Nelly made by EcoBank, focused on empowering women for Africa's development. I must say I'm honored to be in the midst of distinguished and accomplished women today. I'm today in your midst, but also at home, I'm always in the midst of accomplished women, starting from my mom my wife, and of course, my daughter. Women in Africa represent a massive and largely untapped economic resource. The first, gender gap in education, in health, financial inclusion, and political participation. Unnecessary barriers limiting the ability to fully participate in the economy, including access to external finance, self-perceived lack of credit worthiness sometimes, credibility as business owners or managers, cultural gender discrimination, and violence against women, for which we align with the UNITE by 2030 to end violence against women campaign to mark 16 days of activism against gender-based violence between November 25 and December 10. Of course, some progress has been made, but there are other barriers of unequal responsibility for family and domestic role. Each time we do the calculation of GDP and the pro the, what my mother asks, in bringing me up is not part of the GDP, I wonder if I will be who I am today without the work she's done. The income gap between men and women is narrowing. There has been some progress. Women's educational achievements are increasing in many of our countries. Africa has the highest female representation at all levels at any of the region, which is 25% against a global 17%. Regrettably, COVID-19 has revived some of the recent progress made on gender equality by enlarging existing inequalities. Women disproportionately work in insecure labor markets and mostly in the informal sector, putting them at greater risk of falling into unemployment and poverty. So how can women let businesses be supported to succeed and play a major role in the delivery of Africa's future economic development and creation of employment? Today, SMEs are the main drivers of job creation in Africa and account for about 90% of farms excluding agriculture. Women own about a third of registered African SMEs but they are more likely to lag male-owned SMEs in sales, number of employees, and size. Women account for half of Africa's population, 
but in 2018 generate only 33% of the continent's GDP. Remember, as I said earlier, my mom brought me up. That's not counted as part of GDP. Almost 26% of adult women in Africa, that's 140 million women, will start or manage a business. That's one of the highest proportions globally. But women businesses in Africa face a huge gap in terms of capacity building, with the financing gap estimated at $42 billion by affirmative finance action for women in Africa, as well as facing barriers to wider market access. McKinsey reported that if each country in Africa matches the country in the region that has shown the most progress towards gender parity, the continent could add about 316 billion or 10% of GDP in the period to 2025. Ecobank thinks that this likely on the untapped potential of women-owned and led businesses can play a significant role in driving Africa's economic development and providing employment. We have identified women-led businesses as an important way to further diversify our revenue stream while empowering uh, women in Africa. The 42 billion financing gap for women-led businesses in Africa represents a massive and attractive opportunity. Research indicates that women-led businesses are more likely to be financially disciplined and less likely to default on their loan repayments. Women-led SMEs can only reach their full potential if they are genuinely treated as full economic citizens. At Ecobank, we are committed to help actualize the women empowerment agenda across Africa and align with the African Union's principle of gender parity. 50-50. We've made women development an integral part of our internal talent management framework. To drive representation of women in senior leadership positions, we deliberately continue to look for opportunities to promote and recognize more women through association planning and targeted talent intervention. In 2019, we made progress towards this goal by increasing the number of women across Ecobank Group to 46% from 40%, with 30% of them in management and leadership positions. Our women, Women's Lounge initiatives provide internal networking and learning opportunities for women within the bank. This initiative currently runs in Togo and Ghana and is now being implemented across the group. It provides an opportunity for women in Ecobank to share and learn from each other while also enabling them to mentor at different levels of leadership. Through our Ecobank Foundation and Ecobank Academy, we provided training, for instance, in partnership with the United Nations Population Fund to strengthen the leadership skills of 30 experts from the Sahaya Women Empowerment and Demographic Dividend Project. The project improved the autonomy of women and girls, empowered women economically, promote the education of girls and reduce the number of child marriages. Last year, our Ecobank Academy in conjunction with the African Union Commission chairpersons 100,000 SME for 1 million jobs by 2021 initiative hosted a boot camp for 100 young entrepreneurs, 40% of who were women. The initiative is aimed at providing concrete opportunities in education, employment and entrepreneurship for 1 million youth, especially women, by 2021. A fundamental purpose of Ecobank is to contribute to the economic and social development of African continent and empowering women entrepreneurs and women-focused business will help in actualizing this purpose. Our group executive commercial banking, Joseph Anna Ankoma, will shortly formally prevent, present to you the Elevate program. But before she does, 
I can confirm that Elevate by Ecobank will address the pressing critical needs of women-led and focused businesses. We develop a suite of solutions aimed at helping women to succeed. These include discount financing, allocating a minimum of 10% of our loan portfolio to women businesses, smarter cash management, value-added services such as training and mentoring opportunities. Ultimately, our objective is to unleash the power of women in our continent to run successful business, a vital imperative for Africa's future social economic prosperity. I thank you all once again for being part of the launch of Elevate by Ecobank. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeyemi, for the welcome address. Thank you. Now, without much ado, I would like to invite our next speaker to the perspectives on the impact of COVID-19 on by women and the support that they acquire to restart their businesses. Passionate about reducing the access to finance gap, which is bedeviling women in business, she has led work that's been carried out by the International Finance Corporation on improving women's access to insurance. And she's also co-authored a groundbreaking report on the insurance needs of friendly. She manages the Affirmative Finance Action for Women in Africa, known as AFAWA. It's an initiative of the African Development Bank to reduce the $42 billion gap in financing for women-empowered businesses in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Madam Esther Dasani. You're welcome, Esther. Thank you very Thank much. You. Good morning to all. Um, to the CEO of EcoBank, distinguished panelists and guests, and especially women entrepreneurs, I greet you. The COVID-19 pandemic has hit women entrepreneurs particularly hard. Almost overnight, women entrepreneurs have had to evolve their business practices as a result of social distancing measures, take care of their children full-time as schools closed, and deal with the financial repercussion of a world economic economy on lockdown. A study carried out by our partner Impact Her with over 1,300 women SMEs across 30 African countries in July of this year revealed that 80% of the women SMEs had to temporarily or permanently shut down their businesses due to the pandemic restrictions. 91% of the respondents reported that they needed an average of a little over $9,000 per business to keep running and weather the pandemic. The respondents cited the loss of revenue, loss of customers, loss of workforce, standstill operations, and closure of businesses as anticipated direct impacts of the pandemic on their businesses. Similarly, AGRA, the Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa conducted during the same period, a voluntary online survey specifically targeting women agri SMEs. And what they found was that 72% of respondents reported having greater difficulties in accessing markets, 61% were unable to access financing, and 59% reported disruption in their supply chain due to the pandemic. As the CEO of Ecobank already said, women entrepreneurs make an important contribution to the growth and development of our continent through their participation in economy and in the economy and specifically in trade. And despite facing many complex gender-specific challenges, they take steps, risk day and night in order to ensure that their businesses keep running and that there is food on the table. Thus, taking steps to ensure that they have the access to finance necessary for them to grow sustainable and strong businesses right now and in the long run will be important and will enable these women to play the key role in the sustainable economic recovery that our continent needs and most importantly to also create the level of employment 
our continent is so in need of. So how do we support them? We support them by tailoring financial and non-financial solutions that are more appropriate to the type of businesses that they run. Women surveyed by Impact Her again stated that they needed technology, marketing, advisory and legal support on top of short-term injection of flexible finance to bounce back from the pandemic. We also need to support them through an enabling environment that is inclusive with the right policies and, that with, and with an empowered ecosystem and data availability so that all stakeholders can play their part. So it is with this in mind that the African Development Bank created the Affirmative Finance Action for Women in Africa, a holistic approach focused on three pillars, access to financing, via which we actually work with financial institutions, the likes of Ecobank, to de-risk the women portfolio and ensure that we can provide more flexible collateral options for them to be able to access their loans. We also provide technical assistance to both financial institutions so that they can understand the world of women entrepreneurs better and create more focused and targeted products for the segment, as well as for the women entrepreneurs themselves to be able to provide bankable businesses, bankable projects. Through FAWA, the bank also works with governments to ensure that the policy reforms necessary are in place to ensure that both financial institutions and women entrepreneurs can play their role. Our goal is that within five to six years, we will have unlocked up to $5 billion worth of financing to women entrepreneurs throughout the continent. We are pleased also to say that we've already started working with Ecobank specifically in Ghana, where we are exploring opportunities specifically for women involved in green climate um, enterprises to ensure that they can have access to funding as well as access to skill. We are very pleased and proud of uh, what Ecobank will do with the Elevate program and look forward to partnering with Ecobank to moving the needle on accessing financing for women entrepreneurs in our continent forward. Let us remember that when women succeed, everyone benefits. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Dasani, for sharing your thoughts on this very challenging subject. And indeed, when women succeed, everyone benefits. Thank you very much, Madam. Now, uh, in launching Elevate by Ecobank today, we would like to have a conversation around support in helping women-owned and women-focused businesses to succeed. And our guest for this conversation is Madam Deborah Odutayo. Now, let's find out who she is is and what she has to share. Welcome to you, Debbie. All right. Good morning, Ecobank CEO. Um, my fellow panelists, moderator, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to be here. So uh, my name is Deborah Omaomi Odutayo, properly called Debbie. I am pa a passionate television producer, a content creator, an entrepreneur and the executive director of Royal Roots Communication Network, the mother company of Royal Roots Television, R2 TV, Channel 112 on Go TV, and R2 FM 92.9 FM Ibadan. I served as the president of the Electronic Media Content Owners Association of Nigeria, MQAN. Actually, the very for two terms, I also Nigerian female judge in African Magic Girls Choice Awards NBC seven years ago and served as the head judge during the sixth edition of the awards. You may say I am passionate about the industry, hence I have mentored and trained several aspiring producers, many of which are independently achieving their feats. My motto is that life is too short, 
not to make the best out of it. I believe that anything can be achieved with discipline and passion. I love the color green and I love to watch movies, TV series, and I really love traveling. I am married to my best friend and business partner, Greg Odutago. For over 25 years, with whom I have built a media empire, if I may say so. Our union is blessed with three fine young men. That's Debbie Odutayo in nutshell. Wow, wow, Debbie. Clearly an accomplished woman. And we do celebrate women like you across the continent. Thank you, Debbie. So Debbie, you're here with us today at this virtual launch of Elevate by Ecobank. What would you like to see? Elevate Deliver to the African continent. Do share with us. I would first like to commend Ecobank for an initiative like Elevate. It couldn't have come at a better time than now when the world needs an economic lift. The late Kofi Annan, former UN Secretary General, once said, there is no tool for development more effective than the empowerment of a woman. This is a step in the right direction for Eco, and I am impressed by it. For Elevate, I wish to see them grow beyond basic empowerment into an access creating community. For so long, access to market finance and opportunities has been a challenge for women in Africa. This has limited our businesses from meeting global standards. Creating these accesses will break economic barriers and usher in a new where Africa produces female economic giants across different sectors. This will not only change the narrative of a poor Africa, but will also bring about an upturn in Africa's economic outlook. Interesting, very interesting. You have raised the bar and I'm sure that Elevate will deliver uh, to that. Now, um, Debbie, in your own journey thus far, what in your view does it take to succeed as a female entrepreneur in Africa? You are clearly a success and would like to hear in your thoughts what it takes uh, to succeed. According to a report published in 2017 by the National Survey of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, MSMS, MSC businesses contribute 60% of the nation's GDP and 97% to the total share of the employment. Another report by World Bank World Development Indicators 2018 reveals that over 66% of women are small business owners. This means that female entrepreneurs play a great economic role in Africa. From my experience over three decades running a successful media, and media company, I would say what it takes for a female entrepreneur to succeed in Africa is an enabling environment. This cuts across government policies, financial and non-financial support, access to the relevant business knowledge, and a lot more. Female entrepreneurs bring a special skill to the field of business. We have the characteristics that include adaptability, innovativeness, strength, and ability to think on our feet. Accountability and managerial skills. Given an enabling environment in combination with the characteristics earlier mentioned, a female entrepreneur would build a thriving business anywhere. Awesome. Awesome. Now that brings me to um, um, one of the comments that the Ecobank uh, Group CEO mentioned about his mother. And that really does depict what a woman brings uh, to, to economic uh, development in the community. Okay. Yes, financial institutions also propel these businesses to grow. Sure. The creation of an enabling business environment where female-owned businesses can flourish is largely a duty of the government and financial institutions. 
The government should focus on making policies that will positively enhance the accessibility of women entrepreneurs to the required funds and help business support organizations improve their services towards women entrepreneur development. These policies should border around interest rates for loans, special concessions on business registration, taxation, and product export requirements. When women see that policies are in place to favor their businesses, they would be open to business expansion ideas. Financial institutions need to focus on financial education for business owners. This will help them better understand the role banks can play in helping them build a productive business. There is a need to invest in capacity building and business development of women entrepreneurs. Simple tips like why a business should be registered, how small businesses can keep proper records, how entrepreneurs can best position their business for external funding opportunities, and many more. If explained by the banks to female entrepreneurs like us, this will not only empower the women to benefit or bring their businesses, but foster a formidable relationship with both parties, the bank and the SME. Financial institutions should also give concessions and incentives that would attract female business owners into a relationship with them. I know of some banks that give business women lower interest rates on loans, have zero charges on business accounts, and help them, the female customers, I mean, in marketing their products and services. Surely, this is a welcome development and will lead to the growth of women-owned businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Interesting perspectives. Now, um, having spoken of the whole, I'd like to bring that down to your own journey. So you can share with us the role that financial institutions have played in your own business. Um, institutions, uh, furthering from what you've said, can actually um, uh, better contribute uh, to the development of SMEs and aspiring um, entrepreneurs. So tell us about your own experience in financial institutions and then how we can uh, further um, uh, um, the whole. Thank you. As mentioned in my introduction, I have, a, I have been running my content creation and production company for more than 30 years now. And it would not have achieved as much mileage if I didn't have the support of financial institutions. I have enjoyed bank facilities at different times to purchase equipment, rent a new office space, embarked on profitable projects, and increased my company's earnings. Indeed, financial institutions make meaningful contributions to the development of the continent by supporting SMEs and aspiring entrepreneurs. They have resources readily available to support SMEs. They also have the right partnerships and affiliations with governmental and non-governmental organizations that could propel any SME into a greater pedestal of business operations. A necessary handshake is important between financial institutions and relevant stakeholders like government, business development services providers, BDSPs, fintech, and tech companies in ensuring that women empowerment is no longer a pink wash initiative that one focuses on cosmetic issues, but a well-structured and strategic push to address deep-rooted problems in the business of African women. Just as the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child. Similar to it, a business in Africa, it will take a village of positive and well-meaning forces to raise, grow, nurture the business of the African woman. Awesome. Awesome, Debbie. Debbie, I will not be doing justice to the Times if I don't solicit your views on the impact COVID-19 um, has had on your own business and other women-led businesses. 
and how entrepreneurship reposition, or shall I say, reimagines us in the new normal and indeed uh, the future. What are your thoughts, Debbie? <sighs> COVID-19 took the global economy by a devastating shock. Never in our life did we ever think anything on earth could come to an absolute halt for months. But it did. And honestly, I would, it would take a while to recover fully from it. My heart goes out to all women whose businesses ended during COVID. I am certain that you will rise again and perform 10 times better. That's what women are made of. The pandemic, although disrupted, disruption has given rise to a new model of doing business, and this is highly dependent on technology. Now more than ever, technology is the tool for the future of business, which is already here. <laughs> Goods and services are being exchanged all around the world via the internet, from the corners of our rooms, building a globally recognized business has been never been so easy. Physical, physical barriers have been taken off, so we are not afraid. More buyers are comfortable doing business online. My advice to entrepreneurs is to adapt to this new norm. Seek to understand and embrace it. Technologies and relevance to their line of business. That is the technology that is relevant to their own business. And finally, to network wisely, to connect with the right audience. Technology and data is the new gold. The earlier you understand this, the better for your business. Absolutely, absolutely. Technology and data, the new gold. Uh, thank you, Debbie. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Um, so to wrap up, to aspiring female entrepreneurs, I would like to. It starts with whatever you have, whatever, wherever you are. Don't wait until it is a perfect time. The time will never come and ideas are not fully formed. You need to challenge yourself by starting. However, one thing that will set you apart is proper knowledge. A good place to start is by joining the Elevate community. This would you skip so many mistakes that startup businesses make. The first few years of business, there are little, there are a lot of mistakes being made. There is nothing as good as a supportive network of experts to help you get on your feet and handhold you through the process of building your business empire. Echo Bank, I commend you once again for coming up with Elevate. I desire to see the great work that will be done by this initiative and look forward to seeing a new Africa where women become the global business giants because you supported us. Thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. It's been an absolute delight. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found this interview as insightful as I did. It's now time for us to go on a journey to discover what Elevate is all about. To do this, uh, we have none other than the business executive who actually birthed this idea. A well-respected international banker whose work focuses on creating relevant solutions to help build African SMEs and local corporates, positioning them to become viable and sustainable. The Group Executive for Commercial Banking for the Ecobank Group, Madame de Thank you very much, Nana. Distinguished panelists, uh, cherished customers, participants, thank you so much for making time to join us today. 
It was very interesting listening to Debbie touch on some of the challenges that we face as women as we strive to grow our businesses. It is this desire to help women-led businesses surmount these hurdles that inspired us to develop the Elevate program. Women constitute a significant demographic, making up roughly half of Africa's population. SMEs account for up to 90% of all businesses in Africa, and women own a third of all registered African businesses. One in four adults in Africa starts or manages a business, making the continent one of the highest in terms of women entrepreneurs across the world. Interestingly, women plow back almost all of our incomes into our families and our communities. So investing in the woman is a gift that keeps on giving. Despite all of these gains, women do not enjoy equal access to financial services. They continue to grapple with a challenge of access to finance, and, and Debbie um, raised that point. The financing gap for women in Africa is estimated at a whooping $42 billion. These are the facts. So whichever way we look at it, at Ecobank, our goal of positively contributing to the economic development and financial integration of the continent will not be complete if we do not pay attention to women. That is true, and we are committed to doing this. So, what is the need? What is this missing middle? What does she want? What do women want from their bankers? Without question, women require the relevant financial support to help to grow their businesses. I mean, that, that is without question. Lack of access to financing is a common constraint to the growth of women businesses. But beyond financial access, access, however, women are looking for more. Women want an authentic relationship with their banks, not the traditional transaction-based approach. They are not looking for products, no. They are looking for solutions that will help them to achieve their goals. They want their banks to provide them with more information and they'll be admitted to that good information that helps them to make the right decisions. They are looking to be educated. They are looking for networking opportunities and of course, for recognition. When these needs are attended to, they will in turn reward banks that proactively respond to their preferences with loyalty increased share of wallet, good word of mouth, and of course, referrals. So, how did we come by re uh, developing this solution? With a grasp of what the gaps are, understanding really what the gaps are in the female economy, and getting to know what the women expect from their bankers, we carefully crafted this solution to empower and unleash the potential of women-focused businesses. What is the value that Ecobank, Elevate by Ecobank brings to the table? Elevate by Ecobank offers end-to-end -end differentiated business solutions that elevate the potential of women-owned and women-focused businesses through bespoke financial and non-financial services. And who are we targeting with Elevate by Ecobank? Elevate by Ecobank is targeted at registered businesses that are owned by women, managed by women, have a high percentage of workforce are made up of women, or businesses that manufacture products that are used by women. For example, um, fashion products, hair products, beauty products, health and wellness products, mother care, sanitary products, just to mention a few. 
I would like to delve a bit more into the products that we have to offer. As I indicated earlier, Elevate looks at both ends of the spectrum. Our product offering includes both financial and non-financial solution. Our financial so solutions comprise of um, cash management solutions that offer our customers opportunities to effectively manage their finances so our women are able to open um, current accounts to receive payments, make payments, they're able to save at attractive interest rates. We also provide digital solutions such as our OmniLight um, solution, such as our EcoBank Pay solution to our POSs that, assist, that will assist them cashlessly collect and make payments. And this is especially important during this pandemic when everything is going online. We are also, pro under this program, going to provide lending products at affordable and, fa and with favorable conditions. To top this off, with, we are topping this off with, non with relevant non-financial services that are focused on upskilling women entrepreneurs through tailor-made training programs. Additionally, through our partnership with Google, we will offer free online access to our Elevate customers to expand their market access. And let me shed a bit more light on the value add, the non-financial part of, of the solution that Echo, Elevate by EcoBank brings to the table. In collaboration with the Global Business Schools Network, our EcoBank Academy is designing a leadership training that will provide practical leadership development competencies to our, our, our Elevate partners. This program is positioned to build well-rounded women business leaders and will be certified by rec well-recognized schools across the world. Through our Emerald Clubs, we will create a pool of mentors, and I believe that it will be exciting to get, I mean, Debbie to be at one of these forums to ex actually share with us her experience and inspire other young, other up and coming ent ent entrepreneurs across, uh, across, um, uh, across Africa. Additionally, with our e-commerce offering, we will create a marketplace where women entrepreneurs can showcase their products and services. We did touch on the fact that women look for information. They are looking for a relationship with their bankers. And we have responded to that. We have established Elevate Desks in all of our branches, staffed by competent staff to help pro provide much needed advisory services. And you don't have to walk to a branch to access this. You can access this through our help desk EcoBank Assist and this is available, um, the, the numbers per, for each country is available on the EcoBank website, www.ecobank.com. You can also visit our website today, now, at www.ecobank.com slash elevate for more information on our Elevate program. And if you wish to be called back, you can enter your details and one of our agents from EcoBank Assist will get in touch with you and help you. Through El Elevate by Ecobank, we will reach out to women-owned and women-focused businesses across all of our 33 markets. So we are not piloting in one country, two countries, three countries. We are launching Elevate today in all of our 33 countries across Africa. We will attract at least 5,000 women, women businesses annually and lend a minimum of $100 million in credit facilities to women businesses annually at fa on favorable terms. We also commit to train at least 250 women business leaders each year under our Women Business Leadership Academy. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Elevate by EcoBank will touch lives and we will make a meaningful impact on women in Africa. If you are ready to onboard, 
please visit our dedicated website, www.echobank.com slash elevate. Thank you very much. And over to you, Nana. Thank you. Elevate. This is truly exciting and promises to transform women-led businesses on the continent. Thank you, Josephine. Thank you. Audience, please do remember to post your questions and comments in the Q&A box provided. We are now at the pinnacle of today's event. Our keynote speaker is no stranger to both aspiring and accomplished women across the continent. A well-known African stateswoman who has dedicated her life to improving the fate of women and children, inspiring hope and building a more just and equitable world for us all. She continues to work through several regional and international development bodies to accelerate social transformation and we celebrate women like her to deliver our keynote address and formally launch Elevate by Echobank. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Her Excellency Grasha Marshall. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so, so very much. Thank you. I'm truly humbled, but also very honored to join Ecobank today, and particularly in the launching of this extraordinary initiative which again is showing how this bank is going ahead of many other financial institutions in our continent to take up the challenges, run with them, to challenge itself, to challenge us, women's organizations as well, to do our work and to do it better but also making sure that uh, women of our continent, they are really getting access to the resources they need to build their own businesses, to improve the lives of their families and communities. But in essence, they build the economies of our nations and of our continent, prosperity for everyone. It has been said many times that the pandemic, COVID-19, has impacted very severely on women. I'm not going to enter into details here for this. But we are told that uh, women's rights have gone back, as back as one decade, to lose the gains we had achieved. This means that it's not only the women in the market, it's not only the women, the women in the informal sector. Some of the studies we have come across with indicate that women in the small and medium enterprise as well, they were hit very severely by the pandemic. The Grace Michelle Trust ran a series of uh, webinars, nine of them, just to listen to the voices of women so that they would speak on their own voice Instead of us trying to interpret what we are told, we wanted them to say it clear and loud to affirm women as players and change makers. Out of this, we learned that livelihoods, out of this, we learned that businesses, even of women we have trained before, has some closed and others 
with a huge talent to survive. I'm making this introduction to say, we have to be aware that 2021 onwards is time not only to work with the groups of women we knew they were in the system, in the formal system, because many of them, they have to be brought back into the system. And we also have to bring new crops of women into the formal system. So let me propose here to the bank that we as Grassa Michelle Trust would like to work with you to build a pyramid of how women get assets to financial resources, get assets to training in their entrepreneurship, and how they graduate within the activities to reach the medium and the big position in their business. While the bank, particularly in this Elevate initiative, is quite rightly stressing the need of having those beautiful, brilliant faces of African women who are going to show that we in Africa, we are serious in empowering women. And that we in Africa, we are not only, I mean, the informal and small business. We mean business and women mean business. I applaud this because when we say, oh, we want women to be sitting where the decisions are made, those decisions are not made really in our market. They are not made in our small company. They are made in those big spaces where we usually, we see gentlemen of blue and gray, you know. Uh, so we want to bring the color which African women dress when they just go out. But more than the bringing the color and the brilliance of the color, we want to bring the brilliance of the minds, the brilliance of execution, the brilliance of transformation, which African women are bringing of execution, the brilliance women are bringing into the African economy. So that they see the, and they mean substance, and more than making sense of what they want and how they're doing things, they will help to shape new avenues of how we should do, we should be doing business on the continent. New ways of dealing with the people. Because many banks in our continent, you know, they count clients as, as numbers. And as long as the numbers add, and the numbers they say the bank is, is, uh, is profitable, they care less to say, but who is my client? What are the needs of my client? What is the impact my client is causing, not only in her family, but in the communities? So EcoBank is saying, we want those top, top, top to change the landscape, but also to change the discourse of what, what is being discussed if you are to meet the needs of African women. But then we need to trickle down to come to the medium and even to bring those who are in informal to come to formal. And that's where the trust is offering to work with you. And when I say the pyramid, please continue to work on the elevate, but let's pattern for us to build the basis of the pyramid so that it will increase when we get to the end of the first program of Elevate, instead of having 250, we want thousands of women who will have changed, I mean, the landscape of our financial system. Having said this, I want to applaud the bank because it's the first to have taken the strategic decision of having 30% of board members as women. 
as we speak, the bank is far ahead of many other banks on our continent. But we want to continue to work with you and to make of EcoBank the bank to go to on the continent if you want to learn lessons of how to empower women. And this means as the trust, but with the networks which we have to bring those voices which will continue to feed into your strategic thinking, to challenge you in your strategic thinking so that you will devise new products, you will you'll devise new systems, you will devise new procedures to make sure that it's not hundreds, it's not thousands. This bank will have millions of women who can say, Eco Bank is my home to do business. And that's the challenge which I'm bringing here in this discussion. The reason why I engage is because I know I'm talking to like minded leadership. I don't have to convince you already. You are convinced. And what I'm bringing to the table is for us to escalate the ambition. It's for us to work together that we serve better as a model, which not only financial institutions in this continent, but indeed globally, will come to Africa and will come to EcoBank to say, how do you do it? How do you have this level of success? But success in numbers, success in quality of leadership, and success in the way you serve women of Africa. So because of all this, I'm not speaking on my personal capacity alone. I'm speaking in the, on behalf of those networks which we have been working with, which I know they are ready to learn. They are learn, ready to be trained. And when Ecobank invests in their training, not only them, they are clients of Ecobank, but they will be, bring many other clients to Ecobank. So it's an investment in which you are not investing to those women you are training, but you are investing in a multiplying system which will bring you not only in numbers, but those who I can call, they are already apt clients and they will increase the quality of the services which you provided to them. So that's my proposal today, which I'm ready to sit there to discuss with Josephine, to discuss with the Vera I have met already, and many others whom I have I'm, have the ambition of meeting in the bank. I'm still wishing to have an opportunity to visit the academy. And I'll visit the academy because we have the ambition of replicating the academy in areas where perhaps out of language, out of any other reasons, you know, they have not been yet involved significantly with the training which the academy is, is providing. So I'm willing to visit as a simple, very simple learner, just to see, to hear, to ask questions, and then we will agree on how we work hand in hand. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, now I have really the immense, immense pleasure of saying the following. The future of Africa and its economic development is linked, and I would say it is to be due to how we empower African women. And having this bank
success which it has built, but with the ambition it, it is providing in future, it really gives me immense pleasure, therefore, to launch Elevate by EcoBank across all the 33 EcoBank affiliates in Africa. I am so proud of what has begun and certain that with Elevate by EcoBank, the power of this untapped economic force will be unleashed. With these words, I formally declare Elevate by EcoBank duly launched and I pledge my support to build the partnership with this wonderful initiative for the women of our continent and even for the girls of our continent who are going also to come and benefit from this initiative. I thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Your Excellency. You have done us a great honor, a great, great honor, and we embrace your offer to collaborate with us. We look forward to transforming the continent as one. Thank you, thank you, Your Honor, thank you. Audience, you have heard from all our speakers, and we are now ready to take your comments. As earlier indicated, please use the Q&A tab that can be found on the right-hand side of your screen. Elevate is now launched, and we're ready to take any questions that you may have. Thank you. Seeing that we are on uh, a number of social media channels, of course, any questions that you post there would also be uh, responded to. I want to remind you, ecobank.com forward slash elevate, that's the website, do visit it, do register, and let's collectively transform the continent. As our keynote speaker said, let's build from the base of the pyramid, and together we will transform this continent. Great, I can see that we do not have um, questions on this platform. 
but all the questions on our social media sites will be fielded. So let's look out a few more minutes to see which questions come through. Okay, we have a first question here, and I believe that this can be directed uh, possibly at Debbie. I have just started a business. How will Elevate Program support me to accelerate my business? I have one year's experience of running a business. So perhaps, uh, Debbie, you can field that question for us. Thank you. So we would like to encourage you to join the Elevate community. Okay, Debbie, I encourage you to join the Elevate community. I have another question here, and that is uh, directed, I believe, at Josephine. Can everyone share what is being done for rural smallholder women who are the backbone of agriculture production in sub-Saharan countries? Josephine, I believe this will be a good one for you to field. Yes, thank you very much, Nana. Um, as we grow and develop this um, Elevate program, um, like Madam uh, Mama Gracia said, we will be scaling down the, product, um, the program to really get to, to the grassroots. But today, um, we would be working, especially in the area of training, you know, bringing our, our mentors, you know, successful um, African women entrepreneurs down to that grassroots and communicating with, with our, 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 our fellow uh, women at that level and trying to encourage them to train them and give them the skills that they need to help them to come together and register their businesses so that they will be able to um, enjoy the, the, the services that Elevate uh, will bring. So I'll say that uh, the key thing that we'll be doing in terms of reaching out and supporting would be in the area of trading, training through the Ecobank Academy and partnering with like-minded like training organizations so that we can reach them where they are in a language that they can understand. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Josephine. I believe we have uh, some more questions here. And uh, this would also go to Josephine. Does Ecobank have a special financial product tailored or structured towards supporting women in business? A product that's different from the usual financial products offered to other bank clients? If yes, what are the, the what are the terms and conditions of this product? So a quick overview would be would be helpful. And I would look at it in terms of our lending products, uh, which I think is one that is more of interest to a lot of people. We have um, customized um, our lending products into four buckets. We have what we call our inventory or distributorship product that deals with women um, who work with fast moving goods. And under, 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 those, under that uh, product program, uh, we have reduced the collateral um, 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 requirements. We have reduced the interest rate. We have extended the tenor that women um, can, 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 within which women can pay. And most of all, all of our lending products will be supported by risk sharing guarantees, a minimum of 50% risk sharing. So that in terms of collateral requirements, you will not be asked to provide more than 50% um, in any case for any lending product that we'll give to you. So we have similar conditions also for what we call our contract financing. So if you are a woman business and you are supplying a large corporate and you have a, a confirmed contract that um, you would get money from, 
we are also able to finance you on the back of that of that contract. And also, if you need assets, you know, Debbie, as Debbie was speaking, she was talking about how Ecobank had supported her with money to rent an office to buy equipment for her business. We have an asset financing scheme that also helps you to support. So generally, um, this is what we are doing. And then we have the, the, um, the savings product. And the third bucket is the non-financial, which is the training that we'll be offering to our Elevate Monday. Excellent. Thank you, Josephine. Uh, there's a congratulatory note here on the amazing Elevate program and an interest to know more about the digital solutions provided. I think that uh, that's already been spoken to. Um, we would take um, a couple more. And maybe, Nana, just to speak on the, on the digital product, we say that we're in partnership today with Google and we have uh, Google My Business. So um, when you join the, um, the Elevate uh, program, we will give you that free market access um, and, and give you a free website where you can display um, your goods um, online. So if somebody goes into a Google search and is looking for the, the, um, the pharmacy shop near me or a restaurant near me and you are registered on Google My Business, your name will pop up in, in the search and that directs traffic to you. In addition to this, we have an online banking platform, OmniLight, that we offer free of charge to our customers. And with that, you can receive payments, you can make payments 24 seven, you know, you have access to that account. We have our POSs, and of course we have our, our scan, and, scan and pay solution, EcoBank Pay, which is also a free solution that we give to help you digitally collect payments from your customers. So this is briefly um, what we offer in terms of digital solutions. Awesome. Okay. Um, there is um, a question, another question here, uh, which says, how do you define or classify um, women businesses? And I want to direct this question, um, if, if uh, I may, to Esther, uh, considering the amount out of work and research you've done in this in this space, um, uh, Madam Dasanu, can you share with us how do you define or classify uh, women businesses? Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, there are different, if you will, categories of women-owned businesses. Um, if you will, anywhere between zero to uh, five to 10 employees technically are considered in the micro space. The SMEs are 10 and up. So from one country to another, it'll change. In some countries, it'll be 100, 200 to 300 employees. Those are considered within the small and medium size and anything above and beyond that is um, technically above. Now, of course, what uh, we need to take into account is, of course, you have a country definition, and then, and Josephine can also correct me here if I'm wrong, but you also have, uh, if you will, the financial institution's definitions for themselves. Because, of course, and as Josephine rightly pointed out, they have a specific target market that they are looking at as they start rolling out the program. And then depending on how comfortable they get, they decide to go further down the market. So and as such, the definition itself, although nationally uh, instituted and accepted, will change to, will tend to vary from one institution to another, depending on one, their target market, their risk appetite, and also where they have basically a comparative advantage. Because we cannot forget that financial institutions, just like women entrepreneurs are in business, financial institutions are also in business, right? So therefore, you will have a tendency to go where you know that you can really make an impact, but an impact that is a win-win solution both for the business that you run and the customers that you focus on. If I can explain the EcoBank definition, how we are defining uh, women-owned businesses. So um, we, we have four buckets. The first is that 50%, uh, the ownership of, the, uh, of that company should be 50% or more owned by a woman or owned by women. 
or the company must be founded by a woman. That's the first bucket. The second uh, bucket is that 20% or more of the of women, it, it must have 20% or more of women on the board and 30% or more of women in management. The third bucket is that it must have more than 30, it must employ more than 30% women um, in their workforce. And the fourth is that it must be a company that is producing goods that are specifically used by women. So this is how we define women-owned businesses um, under the Elevate program. Back to you, Nana. Thank you. Thank you, Josephine, and thank you, Christine. And thank you, Esther. Um, I have another question here, um, which is uh, inquiring, how soon will the training actually commence? If and I, I think take, that is uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. The training will, con will, will commence in the first quarter of 2021. So next year, first quarter, um, getting to the end of the first quarter, that training will start. We are in talks with the Global Business Schools Network, and we will launch that as soon as it happens. But definitely, first quarter 2021, God willing, we will start. Thank you. Thank you, Josephine. And another question, I think, which will go to yourself, Josephine. Um, it says that um, what are the favorable terms of the facilities to be offered to elevate customers? Can we get facilities up to a certain limit without offering collateral? So um, the, 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 the favorable terms are in, four, are in four categories. First of all, we are looking at the tenor of repayment. So for, normally in a product, for example, where we'll expect a repayment term of six months, we are, we are extending that tenor between three to six months for our Elevate customers. So with an extended tenor, your repayments are smaller. The second part of the, of the favorable tenor has to do with the pricing. You know that normally when you go, there's a, there's a facility fee there's a, um, um, the, on a loan, and it's a certain percentage. And we are offering 75% of that amount. Instead of you paying the full 100% of the facility fee across our affiliates, you will be paying 70% of what the norm is. Then there is the interest rates. On the interest rate side, you can have a reduction of anything between 50 basis points and 200 basis points based on the product and based on, uh, on the country that you are in. So there is that range. And the fourth has to do with um, security. Ideally, under our product programs, we will be requiring 120% um, um, pass, uh, um, collateral. But what we have done under Elevate is to partner with risk sharing partners. So we, we, the, the, risk, the partner takes 50% of that risk and you then will only provide 50% of the collateral. And we, as we grow and we learn, we will get to the point where we are able to offer facilities Without, um, um, without collateral. But it's a learning process for us. And as of today, if you do apply, the maximum would be a 50% request on, on, on collateral. So this is how we are looking at, um, these are the, are, the, are the sweetness that we bring to the table. Back to you, Nana. Thank you, Josephine. And actually in, in um, that response, you have responded to a fair number of questions. Um, there was a question on uh, the special extra mile that will be going uh, will be taken for SMEs, if that could be elaborated upon, I believe you have just done that. Uh, there's also a question of, on um, the special financial support uh, being um, tailored, uh, which you've also just spoken to. Um, we, there was also a question on interest rates, and you have all, already covered that. Hey, there is a question here um, saying thank you very much for an enriching webinar. I would like to find out if Elevate will also support female social entrepreneurs or if the program is exclusively for profit institutions. And I think, uh, Josephine, this is also for you. I did um, mention the fact that we are offering both financial 
and non-financial services. So we could partner with social entrepreneurs and offer um, support um, in that end. So you can reach out to us um, and we'll see how we can partner together in that in that respect. It's purely for profit, yes, but the non-financial services that we'll offer will not be paid for. We will not be requiring that you pay for attending a webinar or a boot camp, an SME boot camp. We will not be requiring that you pay for uh, the Women Business Leadership Academy because we are working with like-minded like partners who will pick up the course. We are interested in how we give back and make a good social impact um, with, with this program. Okay. Okay, um, I think that um, time will permit us to take just one more um, and then uh, we, will, we will proceed. And I think this has got to do with um, the agri-industry. Um, so I'll just pick that last one. It says, great move. Please, how can women farmers and farmer groups benefit from Elevate? Okay. So um, it's an area that we are look, looking to focus on. And as Ecobank strategically going into 2021, agri-financing is work that we are going to do. And agri-financing will fall under any, um, it probably will be falling under either our contract, uh, mostly under our contract financing uh, uh, product program. So under that program, we will be able to support um, women finance, uh, women women who are in agri agri uh, in the agri agri business so that is also an area of focus for us but we will delve deeper into that as we move into 2021 we actually have started some work already in nigeria on this partnering with the government of nigeria and we've reached out to um, over 30,000 customers in nigeria in agri finance great thank you very much josephine Thank you um, to um, all our speakers. Um, thank you, audience, for the questions that have come through. Um, as earlier indicated, uh, questions that we could not field uh, will be responded to, to uh, individually to the e email addresses um, that we use for the registration. So we'll ensure that every question is duly answered. And as I said, please do visit uh, our website echobank.com forward slash elevate to get more information. We will be posting material on our social media sites. So please um, visit for more information. And our doors are open to you as collectively we build this continent um, to prosperity. Now uh, we will bring down the curtain on today's event um, uh, with a vote of thanks from Mr. Humphrey Muturi who is uh, the executive director of our commercial banking business in Kenya, as well as the East African cluster for Ecobank. Um, so at this time, I will invite Humphrey uh, to give us um, a vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nana. Um, I want to start by thanking the almighty God who has made this engagement possible today. We could not be alive were it not for his blessing and his care over us. Secondly, I want to thank our group chief executive, Ade Ayeyemi, who has basically, again, reiterated the commitment that EcoBank has towards empowering women in business here in Africa. Esther, the conversation that we have had about the impact of COVID-19 on our businesses has indeed been very insightful. We also want to thank Debbie for giving us a live demonstration of her true story on how her business has been able to grow over the years um, as Royal Root uh, Communications um, over the years and a great inspiration to women in business. To Josephine Ankoma, who has tirelessly worked towards making this engagement and this program on Elevate possible we really do thank you and may God bless you. Her Excellency Grasa Marcel, thank you very much for again really reiterating how women can make a contribution to Africa's economy and continue to build uh, Africa as a whole. Last but not least, all the viewers across Africa and indeed across the world who have participated 
in this very successful launch of Elevate. We really thank you and we appreciate you. Without any much further ado, I wish you a wonderful day ahead. May God truly bless you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Humphrey. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of the program. A recording of this event will be posted on our social media pages. Thank you all and do stay safe. Thank you. who are in agri agri uh, in the agri agri business so that is also an area of focus for us but we'll delve deeper into that as we move into 2021 we actually have started some work already in nigeria on this partner